for the recording. Okay, so we've started recording the call once again. Good morning, everybody. My clock is now 10.02. I'll give about three more minutes for those who are on the way to joining. There are 48, 49 of us in this call. So that means 48 out of 69 students are here, which is very good. Okay, sekali lagi bagi yang sakit ataupun um, sedang berehat daripada covid ataupun penyakit sebagainya, jangan risau. Yang penting kamu cuba untuk catch up dengan tengok recording dan buat kerja selepas inilah. So while we're waiting for a few more people to join, I'm just letting you know the overview of today's lesson. So I'm not going to teach from A to Z in this class, but I am going to Hold on, if I click the wrong tab. But what I am going to do is I'm going to quickly look over the processes that are involved in this chapter, which is cellular respiration. I'm also going to introduce you to a few mnemonics that I hope would be helpful for you. And we'll also touch a little bit about the concepts from yesterday's experiment. And if you have any questions about cellular respiration, this is your opportunity to ask. So don't shy shy, yeah? If you want to ask questions, tanya saja. Okay, in the meantime, I am having a quick look at GC. Saya cakap nanti ada tempat untuk submit drawings kan, tapi saya belum sediakan. So later I will prepare three Several submission slots for each of the processes in cellular respiration. Kak, kamu mau satu tempat submit satu kaligus. Asing-asing, okay? Okay, nanti saya asing-asing lah. Okay, if my audio is not clear at any point, do let me know. And okay, I'm gonna share. I'm gonna share a window. Okay. Where is my digital pen? My pen, my pen. Okay, sekarang jam sudah 10.05. So I think we can get started with our lesson. All right. Once again, this is what we're going to do for today's Google Meet. We're going to be discussing these things very briefly. And if you have any questions about any of these segments, do let me know. You can always raise hand or just open your mic or chat in the in the messages section okay so first things first uh, we'll talk about glycolysis i've mentioned earlier this week and also like 3 minutes ago that i want to introduce you to some mnemonics so glycolysis seperti kamu tahu itu adalah proses pemecahan glukos kepada dua molekul pyruvate glycolysis referring to glucose and lysis meaning breaking so we're going to break that glucose in half but the process of breaking the glucose in half is not that easy we are going to break it step by step and at each step it has a different name of course when you're trying to remember the name it can be very troublesome because they all sound very familiar so this is a mnemonic that you can use so kamu boleh gunakan mnemonic ini gara gara frost Fatima, gantung bendera putih, pakai pembaris panjang. So from this mnemonic, what we're going to do is we're going to name each of the molecules that we're going to have in each stage of glycolysis. So we would start with glucose. I think I'll do with a blue pen. We'll start with glucose and we're going to end with pyruvate.
daripada glukos, selepas glukos kita akan ada glukos 6 fosfate. Now what I think I would do is I'm going to share this and I'll give you the chance to fill in for this glycolysis. Tengok slide ini dulu ya. Jangan dulu kacau benda lain. Okay, so I'm sharing this link in the chat. Anybody who's using PC or you already have the Jamboard app on your device, you can use this. Kalau kamu tiada app ini, dan macam phone kamu ataupun gadget kamu tiada ruang untuk download app Jamboard, tidak apa. Kita tengok saja apa kawan-kawan kamu buat melalui screen saya. Okay, so those of you who can access the Jamboard, go ahead. Fill in this slide only ya. Ah. Slide number two only ya. Ah. Don't disturb the other stuff yet. Nanti spoil presentation yang saya saya mau ready. Okay, so go ahead. Fill in the name for each of these step. So sambil kamu isi, sambil saya merefek di sini. Kamu boleh guna type, kamu boleh tulis guna pen if you have a pen or stylus or whatever fancy stuff you have with your gadget. Siapa cepat dia dapat? Siapa dapat internet lembab? Apa boleh buat? Salahkan kerajaan. Don't be shy. You can type. You can write. Okay. Uh, so, sambil kamu tulis itu, kamu boleh perasan, if you've ever used mnemonics before, the first letter of our ridiculous sentence will correspond to the first letter of the molecule in that step of glycolysis. Jadi, uh, kamu boleh ubah-ubah mnemonic ini sesuka hati kamu, tapi kalau ikut saya, dan pecara lain yang saya kenal sini, kami suka guna gara-gara fras, Fatima ataupun kalau kamu mau tukar pergi nama kawan kamu yang mula dengan F pun tiada masalah. Fatima gantung bendera putih pakai pembaris panjang. Then hopefully using this mnemonic, you will remember. So while you're writing those stuff down, I'm also going to add an extra piece of information here. I'm adding an extra piece of information. Four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so gara gara frost, frost fructose six phosphate that looks correct. Fatima fructose one six bisphosphate. Not biophosphate. Gantung glycerol dehyde. Yes, glycerol dehyde. Tapi glycerol dehyde, ah, betul kan ya? Bendera, bendera is the product of step six, which should start with one three. This phosphoglycerin. Almost there. Remember, if the compound ends with ik ik acid, you can also change the name to 8. So, contohnya kalau phosphoenol pyruvic acid, kita boleh juga pendekkan nama dia kepada phosphoenol pyruvate. Dua-duanya betul. But if you're using vic at the end, make sure you add acid. I'll give another minute. Slide lain kamu tidak kacau kan? Don't disturb the stuff first, ha? Huh? Yes. 
You guys are doing well? Any more? Any more people typing for the bandera and the putih? Okay, very good. Last one. Okay. Oh, very nice. Okay, very good. All right, let's get let's go through the names of these molecules. Molecule betulakan. Okay. Uh, and see what your friends have written for these segments. Okay, so for this gara-gara fras, fructose 6-phosphate adalah betul. Okay, fructose 6-phosphate adalah betul. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate untuk Fatima itu adalah betul. Gantung. Glycerol dehyde 3-phosphate, betul. Tapi kalau kita mau pendekkan dia, dia bukan GP ya. Kalau kita pendekkan dia, uh, you can write it as GP, but G3P is probably easier to remember. Okay, Bendera, 1,3 diphosphoglyceric acid. Okay, correct. But if you remember what I mentioned in the video, I did say between diphosphoglycerate and bisphosphoglycerate, I prefer the one with bis. Kenapa saya suka bila kita gunakan term-term dalam glycolysis ni ya? I prefer the ones with bis because bis means, uh, contohnya bis phosphate, that means the phosphate is on different carbon atoms. Whereas if it's di, that means there will be two phosphate groups attached to each other or attached to the same carbon atom. Kalau kamu tulis begini, saya terima juga, no problem. Tapi kalau boleh, saya lebih suka 1,3 bis phosphoglycerate. But still correct, no problem. Okay, putih, 3 phosphoglycerate, correct. 2, uh, seterusnya pakai 2 phosphoglyceric acid. Ataupun 2 phosphoglycerate. Pembaris, phosphoenol pyruvic acid ataupun phosphoenol pyruvate. Dan terakhir sekali, panjang pyruvate. Okay, I put down the numbers 43210. Why did I put those numbers down there? These numbers are going to refer to the phosphate group in this molecule. So, ini merujuk kepada phosphate group yang ada pada molekul tersebut. Kita mula dari bawah lah. Panjang is pyruvate. Dia dah sudah phosphate pada molekul pyruvate. So that's why it's zero. Pembaris referring to phosphoenol pyruvate. On phosphoenol pyruvate, there is only one phosphate group. So one. Untuk satu phosphate group yang melekat. Pakai referring to 2 phosphoglyceric acid. Dalam 2 phosphoglyceric acid punya structure memang satu phosphate group. Tapi phosphate group tersebut terletak pada carbon atom yang kedua. That's why the name is 2 phosphoglyceric acid. So when we write 2 here, we are referring to position of phosphate group ataupun boleh juga cakap Nombor yang ada pada nama molekul ini. So far, you following me? Masih boleh ikut? Tak ada soalan. Boleh ni. Okay, boleh ya. Alright. Then I'm going up. Untuk tiga yang di sebelah perkataan putih, it's referring to three phosphoglycerate. So once again, in the molecule. 3 phosphoglycerate, there is only one, satu biji, phosphate group. 
but that phosphate group is attached to carbon number 3 on the molecule. Memandangkan phosphate group itu melekat kepada carbon number 3, masa kita tulis nama molecule, kita tulis 3 phosphoglycerate dan untuk ingat pada dimoni kita letak 3 di sini. Untuk bendera pula, kenapa 4? Sebab nama molecule yang ada di sini adalah 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. 1, 3, 1, 3, 1 tambah 3, 4 lah. That's how we came up with that number. You may have heard of this mnemonic before if you're from XPDT. Um, if you did, it's probably because you heard it from Sir Matlaju who came up with this mnemonic. He's very good at this stuff. Okay, so kamu boleh datang balik kepada ini nanti. Now, more stuff for you to do. You can drag and drop this stuff. Okay, boleh, kamu boleh access sekali lagi. Now you can go to this one. Arrange the sticky notes for the names of the molecules in the correct order. So, kalau kamu ras, oh, we'll start with the easiest one lah. So, at this, paling atas, is gonna be glucose. So, you go ahead and rearrange the other stuff, figure out where they go. I'm gonna zoom in when we check the answers later. So, don't worry for those of you who are, who find that the letters are too small. Okay, saya bagi beberapa minit, kamu tarik-tariklah bagi yang internet dia cukup laju dan gadgetnya cukup canggih. Sambil mereka susun, sambil saya cakap pasal glycolysis. Remember that in glycolysis, there are 10 steps that are involved. And in those 10 steps, there are 10 molecule names that you can remember. If you don't remember every single one of it, it's okay. But try to remember where you can. Mana yang kamu boleh ingat tu, cubalah ingat. Yang penting kamu ingat mula dia apa, akhir dia apa, dan step nombor 4 dan step nombor 5. Okay. All right, so far. Okay, we have one more leftover molecule. Where does that go? Okay, very good. All right, so kamu sudah susun. Good job for those of you who were arranging. Let us zoom in and have a look at the answers. So, preparatory stage ataupun energy investment phase. Remember that glycolysis, we can divide it into two phases. The first phase is the energy investment phase. Ini adalah fasa di mana kita melabur tenaga sebelum kita boleh mendapat tenaga. Pada permulaan kita start dengan glukos. Lepas itu first step kita ambil phosphate group daripada ATP, kita masukkan ke dalam glukos, dia akan jadi glukos 6 phosphate. Boleh juga dipendekkan kepada G6P. Next step kita akan menjadikan glukos 6 phosphate kepada isomer. Okay, so we're going to uh, change the structure of G6P a little bit and it becomes fructose 6-phosphate, F6P. So, ini adalah gara-gara frust. Third step, we're taking another phosphate group and sticking it at the end okay, with a kinase enzyme and that is going to give us fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Ini sticky note memang dia punya bentuk macam ini, jadi terputus sikpuran ya. Tapi molekul ini betul bergelar fructose 1,6 bisphosphate. Fructose 1,6 bisphosphate gara-gara fras patin, okay, ataupun Fatima. In our version, we use Fatima. So, ini adalah Fatima in the mnemonic. Fourth step, we're going to split this in half. One half will be glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate, juga dipendekkan kepada G3P. You might see G3P again in the next chapter. That's why I like to introduce this molecule to you. Okay, so, sebelah akan jadi G3P, sebelah lagi akan jadi benda ini. Dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Kalau kamu tidak ingat dihydroxyacetone phosphate, it's okay. Kamu cuba ingat DHAP. Ini yang tidak mention dalam mnemonic tadi. So, kalau kamu mau tambah, suka hati kamu lah mau tambah dengan sesuatu yang bermula dengan D. 
All right, so go ahead and add that to the mnemonic if you want. Completely optional. And then fifth step is taking DHAP, changing its structure, converting its structure so that it becomes the second molecule of G3P. Okay, and this from step one to step five is the energy investment phase. Ada sebarang soalan pasal energy investment phase? Ataupun dalam arti kata lain, step one hingga step five dalam glycolysis? Doing okay, I guess. All right, then I'm going to move on to the next one. Okay, so ini adalah second phase of glycolysis, which is the energy gain or ATP gain phase. Sini lah kita dapat pelaburan kita balik. All right, so from this phase at step six, from the G3P, we are going to add a phosphate group and also remove a hydrogen. You're going to have to go back to the notes on that one. I forget if it's removing hydrogen or removing electron. But anyways, okay, dia akan daripada GTP menjadi 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So sekarang dia ada dua phosphate group yang melekat pada dia. Uh, can somebody tell me why this phosphate has a red line and this one has a black line? Bila dia sampai kepada 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate ni, dia penting. Dan kita perlu faham kenapa dia punya bentuk garisan untuk phosphate group ini berbeza. Does anybody know why the lines for these two phosphate groups are different? The, the curly line means the high energy and unstable bond. Yes, correct lip. Okay, the curly line, garisan yang bengkok ini, it means it is high energy and it is unstable bond. Correct. So, ini yang banyak tenaga. And this is important because the energy from this phosphate group is going to be transferred into our ATP that we are going to make. So, bila step ketujuh, dia akan ambil tenaga dan phosphate group daripada bahagian ini dan masukkan ke dalam ADP. ADP akan bertukar menjadi ATP. So after you remove that phosphate group, your 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate becomes 3-phosphoglycerate. And then your 3-phosphoglycerate, we're going to change the position of that phosphate group into the middle. It becomes 2-phosphoglycerate. We're going to remove one water molecule. When you remove that water molecule, the structure in here becomes unstable and that's why you see this red squiggly or red line curvy line again making this high energy and unstable bond at this phase it is called phosphoenol pyruvate or pep you're going to see pep again next chapter so that's why i'm introducing it to you right now okay so from pep we're taking that phosphate group putting it into adp adp becomes atp we have energy and then bila data is the phosphate Ya, yeah, sekarang dikenali sebagai pyruvate ataupun pyruvic acid. That is it for phase 2 of glycolysis, which is the energy return or energy gain phase. Any questions about phase 2 of glycolysis? Ada masalah apa nih? Atau sini? Okay, then a uh, quick 15 second break for you to wrap up glycolysis in your head. Okay, I think it's been about 15 seconds. So very easy from glucose to pyruvate. Now we have pyruvate. We also got 
satu ATP. Di sini kita guna satu, di sini guna satu. Sini dapat dua, sini dapat dua. So total gain or net gain of ATP is we got two. And we got two molecules of NADH, two molecules of pyruvate. Now we go to talking about yesterday's cellular respiration. I've already explained in the video yesterday how is the procedure and I explained a little bit about the concept behind it. How to remember if it's oxidation or reduction. I also asked you a few questions during the video. Saya cakap pasal ini sebab eksperimen kemarin dia adalah untuk tunjukkan glycolysis dan apa yang terhasil semasa glycolysis. What happened yes in yesterday's online experiment with each temperature change you need to look at the temperature. Kalau dia adalah boiling water kita sedang cuba matikan enzim dalam boiling tube. So when uh, this one doesn't really have a proper sentence. Ini tidak ada jawapan yang uh, clear for the first one because the second one is what you should have thought about. Uh, ayat pertama ini adalah untuk bawa kamu kepada soalan kedua. Soalan kedua adalah kenapa kita guna boiling water? Why we use boiling water in this experiment? We want to kill something in the boiling tube. The thing we want to kill or destroy is the enzyme in the yeast. Dan kalau boleh, yeast itu sekali kita kasih mati. So what is going to be affected by immersing the boiling tube in boiling water is we're going to denature the enzymes that are in the boiling tube. So kalau enzyme itu terusak, enzyme itu tidak akan buat kerja dia untuk setiap step glycolysis. So you remember like all these 10 steps of glycolysis, it involves 10 enzymes. So if you use the boiling water, the 10 enzymes all are destroyed. They are all denatured. So they cannot produce these things. And also at the same time, they cannot produce ATP. They cannot produce NADH. Why we use 40 degrees Celsius for incubation? We use 40 degrees Celsius for incubation because 40 degrees Celsius is the ideal temperature or optimum temperature for enzymes in yeast. So bila kita ubah dia kepada 40 degrees Celsius, kita sedang pastikan glycolysis enzymes yang ada dalam boiling tube itu boleh buat kerja dia. So if the enzymes are still okay, they should be able to turn the methylene blue into white. That brings us to the next question. What does the white or blue color mean? If it is white, that means a reduction occurred. Reduction occur means this part occur. That means glycolysis is successful. So white, good. White means enzyme still functioning. Glycolysis happening cellular respiration happening in this boiling tube. If your methylene blue is blue, that means reduction did not occur. This didn't occur. That means glycolysis didn't occur. That means no energy and no cellular respiration. Itulah yang dimaksudkan. Bila kita tengok eksperimen kita punya white ataupun blue color. Which type of respiration doesn't matter actually. Sebab glycolysis boleh berlaku dalam aerobic respiration. Boleh juga berlaku dalam anaerobic respiration. Glycolysis can happen whether or not it has oxygen. Tidak kisah. Ada oksigen, tidak oksigen. Glycolysis is going to happen. It's the next stage after glycolysis that depends on absence or presence of oxygen. The process that you are observing when you are observing this experiment is glycolysis. And specifically, whether or not reduction occurs. Dalam eksperimen ni, methylene blue 
mengganti NAD+. Setakat ni okey, boleh ikut apa yang saya cakap, apa yang saya membebel pasal eksperimen ni. Ataupun saya shock sendiri. Any questions? Okay, I guess no questions. So I'm gonna move on. Okay, going down, I also ask you to, based on this video, complete table 10.1 and answer the questions in the lab manual. What the questions in the lab manual are these. Explain redox reaction. Itu nanti kamu boleh rujuk balik kepada notas dia. Just define what is redox reaction. Kalau tidak silap, it's a reaction that involves both reduction and oxidation. What is the substance of a living cell with the same function as methylene blue? This one, you can answer NAD+. You can also answer FADH+. And then name the important process which involves substances in question 2 above. The important process will be glycolysis. Name, explain the biochemical processes based on the observations in boiling tube A, B, and C. This one you need to say whether or not glycolysis happened or reduction happened. Kamu boleh gunakan keyword seperti reduction, glycolysis occur or did not occur, enzyme able to catalyze reactions or enzyme denatured. Kamu boleh gunakan mana-mana tu lah. Nanti saya akan baca jawapan kamu dan saya akan tanda di GC. And then, are enzymes responsible for the color changes? Yeah, it's responsible. Your reason is because enzymes are involved in glycolysis and reduction of methylene blue or anything that kind of goes back to glycolysis and reduction. Setakat itu saja lah. Ada lagi soalan berkenaan eksperimen semalam? Kemarin. Okay, then I'm going to move on to the next one. Remember, if I'm not being clear, feel free to let me know. All right, so that brings me to the next slide. Selepas kita habis glycolysis, kita akan ada pyruvate. Pyruvate akan masuk kepada mitokondria dan dia akan menjalani link reaction. It's going to undergo link reaction. There are three steps in the reaction which you can read on your own and complete your worksheet for that. I just want somebody to write down here what is the product of Ling reaction. At the end of Ling reaction, what happens to pyruvate? What does it become? Sila tulis di sini. It will be the same answer here. Hasil daripada link, okay, sambil kamu tulis, sambil saya membebel, ya. Hasil daripada link reaction, correct, it's acetyl-CoA, will be used in Krebs cycle. So, benda ini akan digunakan dalam Krebs cycle. Dia akan mula sebagai acetyl-CoA. Dan pada penghujung Krebs cycle, dia akan menjadi beberapa benda. It's going to become two molecules. And two very important electron carriers are going to be here. So if we have if we have one molecule of pyruvate, we are going to produce one molecule of acetyl-CoA. 
one molecule of acetyl-CoA, after the eight steps in Krebs cycle, it's going to become a lot of things. So you can refer to your note. Take your time. Easy, easy. Okay. If you think there's not if you think there's not enough space, feel free to add more lines. Kalau tidak cukup tempat kosong, tambahlah plus blank space. Okay, let's see how many. So what you guys have written here is from one turn of Krebs cycle, we are using one acetyl-CoA. After the eight steps of Krebs cycle, it will produce one molecule of ATP, three molecules of NADH, one molecule of FADH2 and two molecules of CO2. And this is correct. One, three, one, two. Betul. Kalau kamu mau, kamu boleh juga tambah, I think, water or oxygen molecule. But I'm not really sure how to balance it out. So, okay lah. These four are the main ones you need to remember. So this is correct. And for Krebs cycle, we also have a mnemonic for you to remember. Krebs cycle, kalau boleh, kamu perlu ingat juga lah molecule yang ada pada setiap stage. If you cannot remember all eight, at least remember some. For me, it's like try to remember the very first one, the very last one, and something in the middle. That usually helps with, you know, answering most questions. Okay, so the, the, the mnemonic that I learned for Krebs cycle is this. Orang Cina itu kuat study supaya faham matematik. So from here, you can probably guess or refer to your notes and answer this at the same time. We're going to start with oxaloacetate. Tadi saya cakap kita gunakan acetyl-CoA kan? Tapi acetyl-CoA dia akan datang dari luar. It's gonna come from like outside the cycle. So we include it from up here. From acetyl-CoA, campur dengan O iaitu oxaloacetate. Baru kita pergi kepada molekul seterusnya. After oxaloacetate, it will be citrate. After citrate. Something that sounds very similar, that rhymes with citrate. And blah, 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 blah. We're gonna end with malit. And because you study non-stop, after malit, you're gonna go back to oxaloacetate again. I'm gonna leave you some time to fill in the blanks for this one.
Is only one person typing? The others are not typing at the moment. If you have any questions, feel free to ask also, yeah? In the Google Meet, I've opened the Q&A slot. So if you have any questions, you can ask through the Google Meet also. Untuk mnemonic ini ada juga nombor yang kamu boleh sertakan di tepi uh, while they are filling that in. Tapi nombor yang disertakan di tepi ini adalah merujuk kepada number of carbon atom for that molecule. So I'm going to write those things here. 4, 6, 6, 5, 4, 4, 4, 4. Okay, if you want, these are the number of carbon atoms in molecules. Okay, and then let's check. We start with acetyl CoA, continue with oxaloacetate. After oxaloacetate is citrate. After citrate is isocitrate. After isocitrate, K. Tapi dia akan mula dengan alpha. Alpha ketoglutarate. This one is correct. Study succinyl coenzyme A. Correct. Supaya succinate. Correct. Faham fumarate mathematic and sweet malid. So that is. If you want, you can use this mnemonic to try to remember each of the molecules. You can also try to do this one. Tarik-tarik, susun-susun. Siapa yang dapat lukis arrow, sila lukis arrow. You don't have to draw the extra stuff coming out of the side if you find that it's too difficult. Eh, eh, acetalco, eh, betul sudah. But if you want to rearrange, that's fine too, no problem. I'll give you guys a few minutes to do this one. Can draw the arrows. Okay, thank you very much, guys. All right, so that is correct. We start with orang Cina itu buat study supaya faham matematik. Okay, so the oxaloacetate, citrate, isocitrate, alpha ketoglutarate, succinyl eh, succinate, fumarate, and malate are in the correct order. Good job. Okay, and then looking at this, uh, setiap ini adalah dia punya step dalam Krebs cycle lah. Okay, what should you remember? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, things you should remember in this is di mana dia punya water keluar masuk itu kamu boleh perlahan-perlahan ingat. 
what I do want to point out is the stuff that are related to energy. So this is step number one, kan? Untuk acetyl CoA gabung dengan oxaloacetate, and then nanti dia punya coenzyme A akan keluar. Tinggal citrate saja. And then the second step from this become isomer into isocitrate. And then we have the third step over here. This step is important because in this one we're gonna get NADH. Uh, should use clean. Okay, so from here we're going to get NAD plus into NADH plus H plus. Saya tidak pasti macam, okay, if you're confused, kadang-kadang kenapa kita guna NADH, kenapa kadang-kadang NADH plus H plus. I'm not sure where is the priority, tapi yang penting NADH kamu tidak boleh silap tulis. Kadang-kadang kamu tertinggal plus H plus, tidak apa, tapi yang penting NADH mesti lengkap. Jangan terlebih number sini sana, like, don't accidentally write it as NADH2. Uh, that's wrong. If you write it as NADH or NADH plus H plus, you will be correct. Okay, so this is the important part because we get energy here. And then we get step number four. Step number four is from alpha ketoglutarate, it will become succinyl CoA. This part is also important because this part we also get NADH. So this need that for the NAD plus. Jadi NADH plus H plus. It's also going to release carbon dioxide, like whatever carbon dioxide here. And after step four, alpha ketoglutarate akan menjadi succinyl CoA. Succinyl CoA dia akan melalui step number five. This is the one that looks complicated in your lecture note uh, because it involves several steps happening. Tapi yang penting uh, di sini akan ada penghasilan ATP. So you're gonna get ATP from this step. Macam mana kita dapat ATP itu? Uh, kamu rojok baliklah nota nanti. Dia ada melibatkan GTP dan GDP juga. So like, have a look at that. Important we get ATP out of this. If after that, after step five, we get succinate. After succinate, it is step number six. Step number six is where we get FADH2 from FAD. FAD menjadi FADH2. And then after that, it becomes fumarate. Fumarate becomes malate. Malate becomes oxaloacetate. From malate to oxaloacetate, we get another molecule of NADH plus H plus. Eh, I used green, Alama. Now, ideally, you should be able to remember the name of each of these molecules and also what happens in each step. But also, you're not a robot and I don't like memorizing, so I don't force people to memorize. It will be really good if you can memorize. Kalau kamu jenis yang sedang mau hafal dan ingat fakta, that's really good. And you might have a really good future as a doctor or pharmacist or one of those jobs where you have to memorize a lot of things. I'm not good at memorizing, which is why I'm not a doctor or pharmacist. Also, I get stressed very easily, so I might have killed a few patients if I become a doctor. But anyways, um, the moral of the story is, kalau mampu, hafal. Kalau tidak, figure out some other way that you can pass your exam. Kejayaan bukan satu jalan saja. Okay. And, um, yeah. Prep cycle. It's long, but you can remember some parts. It's good for you. If you cannot remember the process at all, at least remember that from the prep cycle, you can get one one cycle of prep cycle using one molecule of acetyl CoA. You're gonna get 
three molecules of NADH plus H plus, one molecule of FADH2, and one molecule of ATP. And also some carbon dioxide here and there, whatever. Carbon dioxide will be two molecules. Okay. It's okay. It's okay. All right. And then after that, we compile all the the ATP yang kita ada tadi itu terus digunakan oleh sel. All the NADH plus H plus and FADH2, we're going to take that to the membrane, inner membrane of the mitochondria. And on the inner membrane of the mitochondria, we're going to do the ETC and the chemiosmosis so that we can generate a hectan of ATP. So, uh, do you guys want to draw on this or do I draw on this? If you want to draw on this, please circle the area that is ETC and circle the area that is chemiosmosis using a different color pen. Kalau kamu yang mau conteng, uh, ambil guna pen tu. Use two different color. The first color, circle the region where ETC is happening. Bigger circle. It involves the, uh, ah, yeah, okay, good, 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 sorry, that's good. Okay, and then label it whether it is ETC ataupun chemiosmosis. Okay, very good. Yeah, all right. So the thing with that one protein is chemiosmosis. And the thing on the left with the very many protein complexes, that is the ETC, ataupun dapat panjang dia electron transport chain. Electron transport chain dan chemiosmosis bersama-sama adalah kita punya oxidative phosphorylation. Because we're going to use this oxidation process to put phosphate group and make ATP. So this is correct. This one electron transport chain, this one chemiosmosis. Ini dalam nota dan juga dalam worksheet yang saya bagi kamu, ada explanation step by step. Macam mana elektron bermula daripada sini, dia NADH ini bagi elektron kepada protein complex number one. Macam mana FADH2 memberikan elektron dia kepada protein complex number 2 and how that get passed around and who is the final electron acceptor. And then they're going to use that energy from that electron to pump this thing which is hydrogen ion ataupun hydrogen ion boleh juga digelar sebagai proton Gunakan tenaga daripada elektron untuk ambil proton, bawa ke sebelah sini supaya dia ada gradient and then bila dia ada gradient dari atas dia akan mengalir ke dalam, balik ke dalam membrane, dalam matrix melalui protein yang sangat penting iaitu ATP synthase. In the video, YouTube video that I did for oxidative phosphorylation, I also added a link to a video, no two videos that illustrate how ATP synthase works. If you're still blur blur about how ATP synthase works and you want to know more, feel free to ask or Google more on the internet. But yeah, basically kita kumpul apa yang kita ada daripada proses-proses sebelum ni untuk menjana ATP yang banyak. And if you remember, it's from this part of cellular respiration of aerobic respiration that we are going to get the majority of our ATP. Here we could get anywhere from 34 to 38 molecules of ATP. Let me double check that fact whether it is 34 or 32. Yeah, 34. Okay. 38 is total. 
34 is how much we can get from 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 this part. 32 hingga 38 molecules of ATP. From this part of aerobic respiration, we can get anywhere from 32 to 34 molecules of ATP depending on how effective is that oxidative phosphorylation. This is from one molecule of glucose. Does anybody have any questions about oxidative phosphorylation? Maha, Mrs. Miss Badela Panjang pula. Teda. Okay, I'm gonna assume that the video was clear enough that you don't have any questions. But if you're doing your tutorial or you're doing any of the works and you feel very confused, you suddenly want to ask question, feel free to ask again after this, yeah? Okay, so remembering what I said earlier about number of ATP produced, we can fill in this worksheet. So, ada yang maybe sudah cuba, tapi kalau ada yang bingung macam mana mau isi bahagian ini dalam aerobic worksheet itu, mari kita buat sama-sama. Okay, so for this top part, basically what I wanted you to, oh my goodness, what I wanted you to do is identify whether the ATP is going to be produced by oxidative phosphorylation or substrate level phosphorylation. So di bagian atas ni, sebelah kanan adalah untuk ATP yang dijanakan daripada proses oxidative phosphorylation, sebelah kanan ada Sebelah kiri adalah bahagian untuk substrate level. Phosphorylation. Okay, you can do this in your, you can do this in your worksheet. And then we identify how many ATP are produced via substrate level phosphorylation from glycolysis. So from glycolysis, you're going to get two molecules of ATP and also two molecules of NADH. Kita nanti dulu baru kita kira yang bahagian oxidative phosphorylation. Kita kita, kita tengok setiap proses ini apa hasil dia dulu. Glycolysis, ATP, NADH. For link reaction, we're just gonna produce two molecules of NADH. And then Krebs cycle, we will produce. Prep cycle, we will produce from one molecule of glucose, we will produce two molecules of ATP, six molecules of NADH, and two molecules of FADH2. And now we calculate for oxidative phosphorylation. During oxidative phosphorylation, which is electron transport chain and chemiosmosis, NADH2, one molecule of NADH2 will become three molecules of ATP. So, kita kali tiga, dia akan menjadi enam molecule ATP. Same thing here, NADH, just times 3. That's going to become 6 molecules of ATP. Going down again, NADH times 3, 
becomes 18 molecules of ATP. FADH2, dia bergantung kepada buku. Ada buku yang times 1.5, ada buku yang times 2. Untuk kami, kami ajar kamu untuk kira maximum number of ATP that can be produced. So kalau 1.5 susah untuk diingat, kamu boleh ingat 2 sahaja. Because one, sometimes you get a bit confused, right? So I like to use 2. And I prefer 2 because FADH2 already has 2 at the end. So that helps me remember that I need to times it by 2. So 2 molecules of FADH times 2, it becomes 4 molecules of ATP at substrate at, at oxidative phosphorylation. Kalau kamu mau times 1.5 untuk bilangan ATP yang dihasilkan daripada satu molekul FADH2, boleh juga terpulang pada kamu. I'm just telling you that I prefer to because it's simpler like that. And you can total up the number of ATP produced from each type of phosphorylation. Mencabar sedikit ah guna jambot ni. Okay, so from up here, 6 plus 6 plus 18 plus 4, that's going to total to 34 molecules of ATP. On the left side, substrate level phosphorylation, 2 ATP from glycolysis, 2 ATP from Krebs cycle, that adds up to 4 molecules of ATP. So total number of ATP... produced will be 4 plus 34 total 34 molecules of ATP from one molecule glucose. I will post the answer scheme for the aerobic and anaerobic worksheet in the GC as well. So you can refer to that um, when you're checking your answers. So that be okay, ka? Any questions about aerobic respiration? Tak ada, Miss. Tiada. Okay. Thank you for being so patient so far. I I hope this lesson isn't too boring. But if it is, it's almost over. So be patient. Okay. So just the final bit of chapter 5 that you need to remember is fermentation. So fermentation ada dua jenis. Can you name the two types of fermentation? Tadi yang kita cakap semua tu yang membebel semua daripada slide kedua sampai slide yang ATP ATP ini adalah pasal aerobic respiration. And then when we get to this slide, we're talking about anaerobic. Okay, very good. So the two types of fermentation that we learn about are lactate fermentation and alcohol fermentation. So lactate, referring to lactose, milk, you can imagine cheese, yogurt, and everything else. Alcohol, referring to uh, alcoholic beverages, and also anything that will produce ethanol. So walaupun benda itu tidak memabukkan, kalau uh, makanan yang kamu makan tu contohnya tapai, ataupun ketum, walaupun dia tiada... Dia tidak mencapai bilangan alkohol, bilangan etanol yang boleh memabukkan kamu. Benda itu masih melalui alcohol fermentation. It just matters whether or not it produces that significant, that characteristic product. So why do we have lactate and alcohol fermentation? It's because 
the living organisms that do these kinds of fermentation, they're going to do glycolysis. So they start with the glucose, and then they break that glucose into pyruvate. And then in the process, they make ATP. And they also make NADH plus H plus. But then, since they don't have the electron transport chain and chemiosmosis that we have, they don't know what to do with this. They need more NAD plus to break the next molecule of glucose. So they need to get rid of the NADH plus H plus punya electron. So mana dia mau buang to electron? If it is lactate fermentation, they're just gonna take the pyruvate, put the electron in there, and then it's gonna become lactic acid. Let me double check my notes so that I'm not teaching you the wrong thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. It just makes that into lactic acid ataupun lactic. Same thing with alcohol fermentation. You have glucose. You have glycolysis. Glycolysis turns glucose into pyruvate. And at the same time, it's going to produce ATP through substrate level phosphorylation. And there's extra electrons everywhere, right? So the thing that's going to accept the electrons is NAD+. Plus. It becomes NADH plus H+. Plus. And then pyruvate ni, dalam alcohol fermentation, dia tidak terus terima. Dia menjadi benda lain dulu sebelum dia terima elektron. So it becomes an intermediate molecule which is acetaldehyde. You are learning about all these different types of organic molecules in chemistry for this semester. So I'm sure you can identify which group does acetaldehyde belong to. I give up on memorizing things in chemistry, so I'm not going to try to remember which one that is. But basically, NADH plus H plus is going to give the electron here. So acetaldehyde is going to become ethanol. And then NADH plus H plus becomes NAD plus and then the cell can keep making more ATP by breaking down glucose into pyruvate. And then we see the food. Oh, okay, it's ready. It's fermented. And then we eat the food or drink the drink. Yeah, that's how fermentation occurs. Do you have any questions about fermentation? Can you remember the importance of fermentation? Did you guys delete all the other slides that you were doodling on? Okay, so just uh, if there are no questions, but at least you were responding to me with your drawings and your arranging. So that's that's good. Just to summarize what we did today, I hope it wasn't too boring of a class. We went through the processes that are involved in cellular respiration. So dalam aerobic respiration, kita sudah melalui semua ni. Saya juga bagitahu kamu mnemonic yang berkaitan. Pastikan kamu ingat produk untuk setiap cycle lah, uh, untuk setiap proses yang terlibat ini. Walaupun kalau dapat hafal, hafal. Kalau tidak, eh, ingat dia punya produk. And then we also talk about this, oxidative phosphorylation. We talk about calculating the ATP. And we also touched on fermentation. Fermentation, they memang sangat pendek. Kita banyak. If you can understand this thing about like why it becomes lactic acid and why it becomes ethanol, whew, you're good. There's not much to explain about fermentation. Aerobic respiration, na banyak. So, yeah, that's that. Okay. Any questions at all? Yeah, feel free to doodle in the other slides.
okay, I, I'm, there's two possibilities. Okay, okay, I can turn this Jamboard into PDF after this, so you can refer to this later. No problem, Marnie. There's two possibilities why you're not asking questions. The first is you really understand after watching my videos. The second is you don't understand because you haven't watched my video, so you joined this Google Meet because it's time for Google Meet and you don't want me to see that you're not attending class, but you haven't watched the video. And then two weeks from now, I'm going to see you submit late in GC for this week's task. Which is also good. Kalau lambat pun dapat, asalkan kamu siap. Tapi kalau siap sebelum PSPM, that would be even better. Uh, yeah. Okay, so feel free to ask me questions again after this. Starting tomorrow, it's your mid sem break. Some of you may be going back. If you are going back, as in leaving KML for the week, let me know. Tidak digalakan tapi dibenarkan. I'm also not sure what is the most latest update about the room arrangement and stuff. So you guys have to ask Miss Zahira about that. She would know best. I'll be around this mid sem break if you need anything. I'm not going to do any classes during mid sem break, I think. But if you need consult consultation, I will be available. That's what I want to say. Oh, the tutorial paper, the, the the printouts. So, ada yang minta photocopy. As of last night, there were 59 responses in the Google form that I sent. Daripada 69 orang pelajar saya, ada 59 yang ada reply Google, Google form. Dan saya sudah sediakan photocopy untuk soalan tutorial dan past year. After this Google Meet, I will go and leave the boxes at your dorm. So, kamu boleh, macam yang hari tu saya tinggalkan limau dengan air lah, kamu pergi tingkat ground floor and cari meja yang saya tinggalkan kertas-kertas tersebut. Kalau boleh, ambil sebelum kucing pijak ataupun angin tiup. Nanti transfer 10 cents per page. So, muka surat, uh, kira berapa muka surat yang bercetak? Lepas tu kali 10 sen. Masa kamu isi Google Form tu masih awal SEM kan? So, some of you wrote that you need the question set for chapter 1 and chapter 2, for example. If you feel like you don't need it anymore right now and you don't want to take it, that's fine. You don't have to. Saya pisahkan mengikut chapter juga. Jadi kalau kamu tidak perlukan set soalan tersebut, kamu boleh tinggalkan. Kalau rumit kamu perlukan, ah, lelonglah bagi rumit kamu. But if you really don't want it, especially the chapter one ones, just leave it there. Tomorrow morning, I will come to the same spot and I will take whatever is left. And I also want my containers back, so I'm going to take my containers back. Sekarang saya tunggu ke Harsons siap print chapter 8 punya tutorial questions. If some of you have tried to access the tutorial question on the website already, you might notice chapter 8 has problem. Uh, now it should be fixed by now. Apa lagi ya saya mau umum? Um, macam susah lah buat face to face sebab makin banyak case kita sekarang sudah lah cluster, makin banyak lagi yang bersimptom. Bagi yang terjangkit COVID, apa boleh buatlah memang nobody is safe now. So, don't stress out too much about the, the situation. If you got COVID, it's okay. Just take your rest. Let me know and I won't pressure you too much about the deadlines. Not like I pressure you that much about deadlines anyway, right? right. But take it easy. Give yourself time to rest. Allow your body to rest. Allow your mind to rest as well. Drink enough water. Try to eat even if you don't have appetite. If you need financial help to buy food, not to buy the latest iPhone, do 
ask for help, whether it's through me, through your other lecturers, or through the counselors. Uh, we'll see where we can help you, at least to eat enough every day. If you're vaccinated, I'm sure all of you are fully vaccinated. Ada yang sudah terima booster, ada yang belum. Kalau sudah vaksin itu boleh dan mudah untuk sembuh. Especially for your age, you don't have any underlying health conditions, you can recover very quickly. Just finish your quarantine within seven days to one to seven days to ten days. You'll be you'll be grand. You'll be new. If I'm not mistaken, this is what I heard from my friend. After seven days, you're not contagious anymore. So, kalau kamu masih batuk-batuk pun, asalkan kamu tidak batuk ke dalam makanan kawan kamu atau kepada muka kawan kamu, uh, you're free to go anywhere. So, you can even meet lecturers, you can even go to BT, you can even go to library. Is there anything you guys like to ask? Yeah, don't, don't stress too much about the COVID stuff. We're going to be fine. We're going to be okay. I'm fully recovered. No side effects. Berat yang dihilang semasa sakit datang balik juga. So, guess everything is back to normal. Oh yeah, there's something else I wanted to, I told you to do yesterday, right? Okay, so yesterday I told you to read this lab report. Uh, you don't have to do your own lab report this week. But this is just to show you when you get to university level, Kalau kamu buat TESOL, dia adalah lab report. Tapi kalau kamu, you know, if you keep doing science degree, you might have to do lab report. And they could look something like this. And usually, university level lab report are longer at the discussion part. Because they're usually discussing new things, explaining why the experiment worked or didn't work. Uh, this one, dia tidak ikut reference. So, kalau saya yang tanda ni kena tampiling lah, dia punya reference ni tidak ikut comment. Alright. How do we need to pay Miss for the printed materials? You can, I prefer that you pay me online. So, you know, online banking, I don't have boost, unfortunately. If you prefer to pay by cash, can also, no problem. Um, you can try to catch me when I reach the block. So, nanti saya send location di group lah. Masa saya on the way pergi ke block untuk bagi. Ataupun, kalau tidak sempat bagi duit hari ini, Esok pagi tengah hari begitu bila saya datang college kamu datang pagi pun tidak apa. Okay, I'm gonna end the recording.